counter data type. We start our next lab because we're working with something completely different. And of course, you should have saved your previous lab before this point. If you haven't, then save it right now. And I'm going to save this lab. I already saved it, but I'll go through the motion there. I saved it again. Now I'm going to go offline. I'm going to do two things. I'm going to save it as the name for the next lab. I'm also going to go to tools, database, and delete the database. And you see everything's, all the text is gone off of everything. Now I'm going to delete the code. We have nothing in our database, no symbols, tag names, anything like that. And now I'm going to save it as so I'll save it. I'll save it before I build it. That eliminates somewhat the possibility of overriding the previous one because I forgot to save it before I started. Doing things in the reverse order that I had you do them in the manual. I had you. I created this wrong offline. Now I'm going to download it, which was the second step that I had you do, and that is to I had you delete the wrong that you created. Go offline, create the rung and download, put it in the run mode. You can see that the counter to dot increment, but it is immediately done because the preset is zero. So on the first scan, the preset equals accumulate. So it's done. Now that's no way to use a counter, but we were trying to make a point. So now I'm going to delete this rung online and recreate it and watch what happens when we finalize it. From there, we uh, manipulated that logic a little bit more. We had to create more unconditional runs with count up instructions. And the second one basically behaved as the other one did. It did accumulate because you created it online. And when you finalized it, it incremented. And then we, ha we had to do it again, but this time with a switch a true if on input zero, but on when you finalized it. Yes, it incremented. Then we, we had you add a fourth rung with C55 count up instruction with the switch off when you finalized it and no, it did not increment. But then when you flipped it on, it, it did its normal behavior and that is it incremented. So at this point, if you were to toggle Every time you toggle input zero on, it's going to increment. Now the count up instruction is a little bit different than the timers. The timer instructions, the timer data types count units of time. They don't count false true transitions. Count up and count down instructions react to false true transitions. The preset and accumulate behave the same way that they do with a timer data type. However, with a timer data type, once the accumulate equals the preset, it does not keep counting units of time. But the, the counter data type, if you keep going false true, it's going to keep counting up or keep counting down. In this case, our preset was zero, so the done bit went on immediately. In the next process, the next step, I had you create these four rungs in the run mode, but not finalize them until you had answered some questions. I had you enter a five for the preset in this instruction, but not in this one. Because what I wanted to demonstrate was that C50 is a single counter data type. The preset for C50 is the preset for C50. There aren't two of them. These two instructions, the count up and the count down, both address the same instance of a counter data type. When you're in the program mode, so to speak, I'm in the edit mode. If I put a five in here for preset, notice that it does not change down here. This is C5 colon zero. This is C5 colon zero. This is the one that's actually being run. Remember, if you go over here and look at your edit zones, little green R's run. And this is a copy of this rung and it's in the edit mode. So you see, I set that to five there, but when I finalize this, 
one of these two is going to change. It's either, they're either going to both be 5 or both be 0. There's your answer. And the reason, the reason is because this set it to 5, and, and this was in the edit mode. So this considered that 5 something that you wanted. Now I can go in here and put it back to 0. We'll leave it. We'll leave it 5 because that's the next step that we're going to do. What phrase do we use to describe this behavior in ladder logic? Glass man wins. How did the re presets respond when you verified the rungs? They both went to the same value. With the preset at 0, save and download. If you're already online, not a problem. We'll pop that back to 0. Is the done bit set as soon as the program is executed? Well, uh, both of these push buttons are off and both the done bits are on when the run goes from false to true. Now we didn't do this in the lab but we'll just do this right here. I'm going to change the preset to 1. See the done bit went off because the preset and the cumulant are no longer equal. If I set the cumulant to 1 and I'm going to do this from the keyboard not in the logic. Done bit goes back on. So this is an important characteristic for you to understand. Remember you can manipulate these values from other places in the logic. You could have a rung that moves a value into the preset or cumulant. C5 colon 0 has no idea who's doing what. It just responds. Did the preset change in both instructions on the screen? Yes. When you change the preset to 5, did the done bit clear itself? Well, we already did that. We'll do that again. Yes, it did. Does this behavior vary from the timer data type when you change the preset after the done bit was set? Yes, you remember with the timer data type, once it's done, it's done. You can go mess with the preset and the cumulant all you want, but when it's done, it's done. Not so with the counter instruction. That's not how a counter data type and counter instructions work together. Other than the fact that timer instructions or timer data types count units of time and counter data types count events. Other than the fact they both count something, that's where the similarity ends. Toggle input 0 until the cum is 5 or greater. Then toggle input 1 until the cum is less than 5. That would be less than 5. 5 less than 5. Did the done bit clear? Yes. Did the accum clear as well? No. The only way you can clear the accumulate value in the counter data types is you have to use the reset instruction or you have to use other instructions and logic to directly change the value. Toggle input 0 until the accum is equal to the preset. Then toggle once more. Did the done bit clear? No. Did the accum clear as well? No. So what we're doing here with this lab project is we are differentiating between the timer data type and the counter data type. So we're specifically having you do things and answer questions that show you the difference between those two data types. Although they both count something, the control bits and the behavior is definitely not the same. Toggle input 0 till the cum is equal to 5. Is the done bit on off? It's on. If the cum is equal to the preset, the done bit's going to be on. Or if it's greater. So if I go one more time, go to 6, 7, 8. As long as the cum is equal to or greater than the preset, then the done bit is going to be on. Once the cum is equal or greater than the preset, does incrementing the cum change the state of the den the done bit? No. Toggle input one until the cum is zero, and then several more times. Timer and counter data types are signed integer. Bit fifteen is the sign zero for positive and one for negative. This gives you a range of signed integers minus thirty two thousand seven six eight. Two positive 32,767. That being said, what would you venture to say is the highest and the lowest that a counter data type can increment or decrement to? Well, it's an easy way you could have tested this. I could go here and type in 32,000 
766. Okay, and now I'm going to increment it. Now watch what happens when I go one more time. It goes right to the lowest value on the number line that you can work with with timers or counter data types. So if I decrement that, you're probably thinking, okay, wait a minute. If my cum is minus 32,000 something and I decrement, now it's positive 32,767. What is that? Well, that's just exactly how it works. It's kind of circular in a sense that if you've got 32,768 and you increment one more time, the count goes up, but you, you just set bit, bit 15 to 1, which is a minus value. So if I go to, um, I can't change the radix here to show you that accumulative value, but what I can do is go to, say, something like B3, and I'll change the radix, and I will... I'll just use this value up here and I'll put in uh, 32,767. Now I'm going to go back to decimal. I'm sorry, binary. Now look, they're all ones except for the last bit. Okay? Now I'm going to change that. So if, if you were incrementing, one more increment and that's going to make this one. But it would make all of these, well, let's just go back to decimal. We didn't do this in the lab. This is extra. So now look, I've got minus one. Now think about that. All ones is minus one. If I was actually incrementing From there, one more would make this one and these all zeros. So I'm going to go back and make that zero. And I'm going to make this one. So remember, if the first 15 bits are all ones and you increment one more time, then this becomes one. And all those go to zero because that's the next value in incrementing that 16-bit integer. Now if I go back to decimal, you see I have minus 32,768. That would be this with a 1 and these all zeros. Now that might be troublesome for your thinking, but it's something to be aware of. When we're working with the counter, 32,768. If I increment up, count up, see it's going back towards minus one or zero. If I go down and I go one more time, now I'm gone the other direction. So kind of look at these numbers in a circle. And you start at some point on the circle, zero, and you increase and it forms a half a circle. And when it gets to the other side of the circle, it's 32,767. If you go one more, now you're going from the, if you want to say the lowest negative value or, or the highest down count, back around on the bottom half of the circle, right back to zero where you started. So if I made this, I'll just make this minus three. Okay, to say that we are incrementing, and I didn't want to do it 32,000 times. So if I increment minus 2, minus 1, 0. So I'm right back at the starting place. Increment this way, and you're going positive. Increment the other way, and you're going negative. So let's put back in there 32,768. <laughs> It won't take that because it'd have to be a negative. Minus 32,768. If I decrement one more time, see, 
and went right to the highest value and now it's counting down. Just something to be aware of. The answer in the book was the highest is 32767, the lowest is minus 3276. Another thing that I had you do was to duplicate the count up rung. Here I'm using a different address for the uh, to create the false true transitions than I had you do in the manual, but it really doesn't matter. I think I used three in, input colon 0, .0 slash 3. Both of these buttons here are executing count up instructions against C50. So if I do the first one, see the kind of erratic behavior I'm getting? It's scan counting. But the countdown only does one because I'm only executing one. If I do input five, it's doing the same thing. So you could answer the questions, does it matter which CTU you executed? No. How would you describe this behavior? If you're fairly new to this, you may not realize, but it's a scan counter. If I were to turn this on, okay, and turn this on, Do it the other way around. Turn this on, and then this on. See, I don't get any good behavior no matter what I do. Fundamentally, if you have one rung that's true and, and another that's false, I don't want this to, t to uh, time out, so I want to be careful here what I'm doing. I'll put this back to zero. I'll do this again. If I do this one on, as long as that rung is true, then the first CTU in rung zero, it says, hey, C50 true. And then right away it says, hey, C50 false. If both of these are false, nothing happens. If both of them are true, nothing happens. But if one is true and the other is false, in other words, if you're using two separate count up instructions against the same counter data type, what you're doing is you're creating a situation where that counter data type, C50, that instance of a counter data type within one program scan is seeing true, false, next scan, true, false, next scan, true, false, or false, true, false, true, false, true. And it's going to count every single one of them because it sees a false to true transition. It doesn't, C5 colon zero does not see your logic. It has no idea where the true, false is coming from. But by doing this, we created a situation that would cause that. There was also a question on the screen in front of you, how many locations are there that you have access to the done bit? Well, there's two. The, the done bits that you see right next to the instruction, those don't count. Those are indicators only. You don't have access. You can see the state of the done bit, but you don't have access. How many locations on the screen do you have access to the preset value where you can click on it and change it? Four. How about the acume? Four as well.